In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to survey the seven different styles that you can choose from as you design your own particles using the Particle Designer. I have a clip here on the screen and I want to use some particles of some Easter eggs that I'll create on my own. So let's look at some ways in which you can modify those. I'm going to click on my particle room on the left side. I can press the F6 key or I can press the appropriate icon. And then when I'm there, I see all the pre-designed particles. I'm going to create my own in this case, which means I go up to the upper right corner to the box with the cr cross in the lower right side that says create new particle and I will do that. The first thing that PowerDirector does, it goes to your file system and asks what kind of object do you want to be your particle. I'll pick the egg here and we'll begin there. Now the default when you get started is the emit method will be a point and the particle style, which we'll focus on in this tutorial, will be the bubble style. So if I go ahead simply and preview it, uh, this is what I see. It comes from a single point and it goes out in what's called the bubble format. Now one of the things I like to change when we're working in this, in this situation is I want to change the fade in and fade out. You notice we have these darker blue fade in and darker blue fade out. I'm going to disable both of those. I also, for the sake of the tutorial, want to make the maximum count, not 100. We'll make it something we can easily follow. Let's just do seven. I'm also going to increase the life way up here so that the particles don't fade out or die. Now, the other thing I want to do in looking at these seven different styles is use them in a line situation. And when again, when I'm in the line, I can control the width of the line. I can control the direction of the line. I can control the drop from the line. It, the default is 90 degrees. If I don't like that, I can uh, take the arrow and change it anywhere in this 180 degree range. We'll just make it off center a little bit here and uh, move this up. So now when I go ahead and play this, I have my seven particles emerging, different sizes, different speeds, all built into the variations. So this is the bubble format. Let's assume I want to try something else in my particular application here. So we'll stop this and we'll go from bubble to ball. Notice a difference when we use the ball style. They will, they will begin at the same place, but then they will drop. And in this case, they'll drop back at an angle because I have angled it from there. But when they get the center of the object gets to the bottom of the screen, automatically bounce up. It's a nice effect. Just for fun, what I'm going to do is leave these ball objects is one particle. I'll stop that and I'll turn it off for now and we'll actually create another particle. Just click on the particle object in the top of the preview screen. We'll just use our same egg. We won't use a different particle here. And I'm going to pause this while I turn off the fade in and fade out and increase the duration and decrease the size. Okay, I'm also using the line emit method on this one. But let's try a different one. Let's see what happens when we use the spring option. So I'm going to click on the spring. And now we see the particles lined up directly below our origination point. If I play this, you'll see that they bounce and then they bounce up and down and stop at that locale. What this does is this controls the place where they stop, the place where they start. And unfortunately, I can't find a way to lengthen the distance between the origination point and the stop point. I want them to bounce, say, at the bottom of this area on my screen. I have to have the origination point to be up here. I can widen it, I can angle it, but I cannot change the distance between where they start and where they stop. We'll just keep it lined up more or less even. Go ahead and play here. And then there are the uh, seven eggs that bounce down in this particular example. 
Not a bad kind of style, but I wish we could modify it even more. Another thing that you notice is that when we have multiple particles, we cannot yet in this version rename them. They just go by a different number, starting with particle, and then each new one will add another number. So that is that one. Let's go ahead and try another one. Let's try what, see what happens when we click on the swing option. Now you notice when we have the swing option, we lose all distance. Uh, the swing basically will rotate all of the items as they come on the screen on an equal but very subtle measure. If I go ahead and play it, they pop on the screen independent, but then they begin to slightly rotate left and right. And I can't find a way within the particle style itself to change the spin of that. So in this default, that's about all you can do. Blink is similar. If I click on stop it and click on blink, uh, blink again does not have a distance, a movement. But if I go ahead and click on the preview screen, they'll pop on the screen and then they will tend to blink on and off. It doesn't change the size or the location, just causes them to blink. Now, one problem about using blink is it doesn't work very well or with swing when you use the point emit method. If I move it back to point and click on uh, preview with blink, all I have is they pile on top of one another and try to blink, but it doesn't work very well. So we're going to stop that and go back to our line emit method. Two other complementary particle styles you can apply when you're building your own particles are scale and spread. And as you notice from the graphic, they're opposite. I would actually call them shrink and expand if I were to rename these. Let me click on one and you'll see what happens. We'll go ahead and preview this. And you notice they start and then they get larger and then they kind of shrink again. They pulsate a little bit. That is the um, scaling down. I would call that the shrink one. Then we get to the spread one. I'll go ahead and preview that. And the spread one just gets larger and larger. It seems to me to function more intuitively than the other one. But if I go ahead and play it again, you'll see they start at a certain size and then they grow proportionally. So those are different ways in which you can modify particles. Again, remember, you can put multiple particles in the same particle design. I'll turn both of these on here. And now I have two different particles operating on the same kind of object in two different ways. I'll click on OK. I'll save it as eggs. And then I'll drop it down into my track here, my Easter track. And we'll play our movie. And you'll see I have two different variations running at the same time. Some bounce and go away. The others simply drop down. And uh, you can use as many variations as you want. I've experimented with up to a dozen different particle tracks on the same particle. And you can go in and design and add it, add another one, or you can just layer particles on completely different tracks. It's up to you.